All right. So um, the title of my talk is Coding the Powerful Language That Every One of Us Can Speak. So before I start talking about coding language, let's talk about um, the history of human language. So since 1,000 years ago, we humans have invented something called language to talk to each other, to communicate. Then um, since then, the language actually changed and evolving and um, updated to according to the society needs. For example, during the ancient time, there's not even a word called TV, but now we have. Yeah. Since then, um, it's evolved until the modern English, Tamil, or more the modern language that we are speaking now. Right. How about coding language? Since when we have something called coding? Like I have a language called coding. As in the years of 1843, that's the first time where someone, someone said that, oh, someone write a coding program that runs a coding. Then it's not very, um, it's not very famous like every one of us know something like coding since years 1957. It's the same year as Malaysia Independent Day, by the way. So there's the first popular modern coding language that introduced is called Fortran. And this language is still using in some of the crit, uh, mission critical application nowadays. And then within just 60 years, we have about 100 plus language, new languages that introduced that we can use nowadays. Oh, all right. So why, why do I tell you like coding language? It, um, it's appear that it's quite important in our life. So um, let's do a test together so that you know, so that we know how that coding is impacting our life. Um, may I have everyone stand up? Yes, stand, please stand up. I come to this slide too fast, yeah. So um, I will ask you a series of questions. If the questions, uh, if your answer to the question is yes, please remain standing. If your answer to the question is no, please take a seat. Then the remaining questions will be directed to those who are still standing. So this is my first question. Can you live a single day without computer, smartphone, tablet, and TV? Which means you can't use YouTube to watch unis, unis, unis songs. Um, you can't browse your internet, your Instagram, your, your, your WhatsApp, or WeChat. If, the question, if your answer is yes, please remain standing. If your answer is no, please take a seat. Please be honest to yourself. All right, not bad. Because I asked this question a few times, and everyone is sit down because we do rehearsal, right? So most of you can still survive with just one day. So here is my next question: Can you live without transport for a week? By transport, I mean your cars, your bus, your RT, your flights, your ferry, or anything for a week. You still have your leg; you can walk. Uh, you still, if you have a bicycle, no old bike, you can still cycling. If yes, please remain standing. If no, then you please take a seat. All right, so we have quite a few. Yeah. All right, so I see that quite a few people still stand up. Give a clap to yourself. Because by now, I think I've probably already sit down because I'm an internet-based person. I, I can't really live without internet. So why do I ask this question? And how is related to coding? And in the 60 years that I mentioned just now. All right. So since the first, um, this is my last, before I ask my last questions, please still remain standing because I need to explain a little bit. Yeah. Since the first, uh, pro, the first popular modern programming language introduced until today, we have gone through quite, quite a bit of uh, thing. So I, I, I separate that to four eras. The first one is something we call pre-PC era, which we already have computer, but those computer is only for business purpose and it's so big and it's bulky. Then we have the PC era, which we have our personal computer. At, at the, we can buy it for our home usage. You have software like Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Office and stuff. Then during 1990s, we have something called internet and Wi-Fi. And now everyone, like most of you that could sit down, cannot survive without Wi-Fi, internet. And since then, we have Facebook, YouTube, and <laughs> Google. And we are still using that for now. Then we have our smartphone era in 10 years ago. It's just 10 years. Now everyone, we have my smartphone and mobile phone in your, in your hand. And you have at least software application like um, 
Instagram, Snapchat, and Uber, and others, and it actually make our lives convenient. So what is it related to coding? Turns out, if there's no coding, then they might not have computers, there's no program to run, and there might be no software, because software is written with coding language. And to make it even worse, look at something around you, and probably something like a traffic, simple as a traffic light, or the washing machine that you have at your home, without coding, I'm, I wouldn't say that, because I put that equal, it's not exactly equal. Probably we still have technology advancement, but it's not that fast. Um, because if, without coding, right, there's no program that tell your washing machine to wash your clothes. The washing machine is just a bunch of wire and metal that do not do, any, do, do, not do anything. So here comes my last question to all of you. Can you live in a world without coding? If no, please take a seat. If yes, please still standing. Without, yeah. So for those who, for those, I think, I think about 90% already sit down. So for those who you still stand, we can talk later. Thanks, thank you. This is my last question. Yeah. So I think now you are clear that the impact of coding in our life, most of us live with, with the thing, the products of code. But what exactly is coding? When we talk about coding, right, this is the most common explanation that you find. So coding is something like talking. It's just that we humans talk to a computer. So the computer can understand different languages, like just now she introduced me. Um, we have C Sharp, J JavaScript, and Python, and many more programming languages. Um, when human coding, we need to give a set of very precise instructions to the computer to tell it what do you expect to do. For example, if I want to print and hello, the words hello on the screen, and, and do some animation, I will need to give exactly like, please print hello, and then jiggle it for two seconds, only two seconds. Then the computer will take my instructions, my program, the code that I wrote, run it, Process it, run it, and then display the hello in, in, the, in the computer. So, because when people imagine someone is coding, right, we always say that someone is sitting down looking at the computer and then probably with a spec and they start coding. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, that's true. That's when we really writing the code. But coding is actually more than this. Um, why do I say it's more than that? Let's compare coding with public speaking. So when you go for public speaking, right, you need a title. Because you need a title to talk, right? Then you need to do some research on the topic that you want to talk about. After that, you need to structure your content, how to opening, how to close your, con how to close your talk. Then you start writing the script, writing how, how you want to do the talks. Then do a lot of rehearsal. Then finally stand and speak. So this is pretty much the process is pretty much the same as when we do coding. Before we start coding, we need to know what is the problem that we are trying to solve. Something like your Uber, your Grab car apps, is what try to solve the problem when you're hailing an, um, a taxi. Then we will try to break down and find the right solutions for the problem. Now, then we will structure our program, like how do we expect um, the system um, to work. Then only we write the code, validate it, try to test a few rounds and all the use cases then run the program. So what I want to, what, what, what is my point here is that writing code is just part of the process of coding. And you need a lot of thinking, planning, and um, analytic when you write coding. So codings, coding is actually quite fun things to do. And I would like to challenge you probably why, how about that you start coding? Because this guy said so, it's not just me, this guy also said that. Don't just play on your phone, program it. Why do you need to program it? Because you already have a very powerful tools in your hand, your phone and your laptop, and it can actually do something like turn some, nothing into something. Um, I would like to share a few, um, a few, a few reasons on why me and a few friends of mine, we learn coding. And please take note that some of my friends is not working as a software engineer or programmer. It's just working as probably accountant, but they know how to write coding. They learn it, and why do they like it? 
So the first question is to have funds and build things. So um, probably some of you might not have gone through this era. This is the era where it's pre-Facebook era. We have MySpace. And with MySpace, we can write some very simple code to actually turn our page into bling bling like littering. And because I want to show off, right? So I, I, I tried to learn some programming to how to make my page um, look bling bling. And that's one of the first program that I wrote. Um, now I look back, it's quite ugly. Yeah, we, that's, why, that's why there's no such features in Facebook. But I really had fun of uh, tinkering with code and then try to write something and build something out. It's, I'm actually quite happy during that time. And um, this is a sample of a 500 ringgit words clock. So once of my friend, she went to Singapore and he saw this clock and he really likes it, but the price tag actually shocked him. So he was thinking like, probably I, sh I can make one myself. Then he tried to go and IKEA. That's frame. It's actually an IKEA frame. He, he don't know. He don't know everything. He don't know everything about microcontroller or coding or stuff. Or well, he know a little bit of coding, but he don't know everything like the wiring or stuff. But this is the problem that he want to solve. So he go and do all the research and then wiring coding to make it happen. So it ends up, this is the 80 ringgit version of the things, but he actually, if we haven't, uh, we haven't put in the, uh, the price for his effort, it takes a few weeks, but she definitely feel happy and feel achieved with this. Yeah. So <laughs> the next one, um, learning coding, you, you can uh, be lazy and productive. Why do I say so? Now this is the news. A programmer actually write a script to automate, a script also is a program that written by code to automate some of the things in his life. For example, one of the things he automated during his work is um, if by 9.30 he haven't checked in to the, haven't logged into the office computer, please automatically send an email to the boss say, um, I'm sick, I'm on MC. And, they, and he named the script um, Hangover. And, yeah, and it's not a bunch of a very interesting thing. You can go and search out this and see what other thing that he tried to automate. So he's be lazy, but at the same time, it's quite productive. Huh? All right. Then if the first two reasons is too personal for you, but it's too small for you, the last one is actually something big, is to change the world. To changing the world, it can be something like an ATM machine. So ATM machine actually changing our, our ways of withdrawing money. Imagine that you need to go to the bank, queue up, and then draw the, withdraw the money, and spend a few hours there. Now you don't need, you need ATM. And then we have online banking now. Or something like um, something like uh, ride hailing uh, ride hailing apps like Uber and uh, Uber and Grabs. It's actually make our life easier. We don't need to stand under the sun and then put our hand up to call the taxi. Or changing the world can be something as small as an alarm clock. The alarm the alarm application in my phone now is actually really changing my life so that I don't get fired by my boss because I cannot wake up. Yeah, and changing life. It's also about changing others' life. For example, YouTube. It's easy, right? YouTube, like Eunice. If without YouTube, there's no place for her to publish the thing to show to you all. Yeah. So if you know how to code and you know how to solve a problem, then you, 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 can, you can try to utilize these tools to do whatever things that you want to do. So, um, so there are times to times where there are people talking to me like, I know coding is cool because everyone say that I should learn coding, but I think coding is not for me. It's not a thing, it's not a thing that I can do. So here I would like to address some of the myths that I often heard people, that people often tell me. So one of the things is I need to be good in science and math. So if I'm not good in science and math, I don't need I I I I, I couldn't code. That's true if you're building a rocket. Seriously, if you are building a rocket, you need so many calculations, right? So that you don't kill someone's life, right? So you need a heavy calculation. If you are doing scientific related, uh, related application, then yes, you need that. But imagine you are building a simple calculator app or an online dating app, probably like Tinder. How much mathematics or science do you need to have? For the calculator, yes, you need to know how to add or how to minus and how to multiply, right? Yes, you need to know math, but it's not that difficult, right? That like most of us know, right? Then for online dating apps, it's even easier. You need to know how to, how to do the animations. Yeah. 
okay. So some of the myths, the another myth is people say coding is for programmer only. If my ambition is not to become a programmer, I, there's no point for me to learn coding. And I want to tell you that coding is like drawing. It's for everyone. It's, if you learn coding, because coding is not just typing code. It gives you a new perspective, knowing that what is impossible, but with coding, you can turn it to possible. So, and I want to tell you something that our neighbor country president, Mr. Li Xianlong, he knows how to code. And because coding is also problem solving, right? so probably he can run the countries quite, quite good. Right? I didn't say anything about our country, okay, <laughs> right? So the last one, if some of you tell me, like in the room, tell me I'm too old to code, I'm really like seriously, because most of you are younger than me. So there's this lady, it's uh, now 82 years old because this is last year new. She learned coding at the age of 81. She bought her first computer at the age of 60. She, he, she write a program, like this is the traditional um, Japanese girl's age program that she code herself, she taught herself code, and she come, come up with this. So there's never too late to start coding. Right, so all the myths are busted. How about, like, how, how can I start? Now the question, probably I have convinced you, right? So how can I start? Turns out to start is exactly what I have mentioned earlier. Try to find a problem that you're trying to solve, then only find the right tool, like coding kids, coding language, that can help you to achieve that. So some of the problem that you, you this is some ideas for your problem. You can um, try to do a website for you, yourself, or your school clubs or something. Or you can try to build a simple game, games, or try to build something like an M&M &M dispenser. This is something codable. Or probably try to do something like tell me bedtime story, Alexa. Later on, we will have a store, we will have a talk about smart home, right? Right. So these are some of the ideas that you can kickstart, and you probably no need to do it alone. You can find a friends or join a community to start together to learn together. Because sometimes if you feel lonely, like probably you're stuck there, you have no one to ask, right? You can always there in Malaysia. There's quite a few coding communities that you can join, and. Learning to code is a journey. It's not something that I can learn in one day. There are quite a lot of marketing, marketing, not, not, not scam, uh, marketing workshops that tell you that zero to hero in one day. There's no, such, there's no such thing, I would say, because in one day, you can learn the syntax, you can memorize the syntax, but you never really understand the coding process. So you need to understand that. Yeah, I would like to end my talk with a, a very famous quote by Picasso. Learn the rules like a pro, so you can break them like an artist. So learn the coding and the syntax like a pro, then try to, try to find a way to solve your problem, solve the world problem. And the next 60 years can be, your, some, like, some, can be something like you do and change the world. Thank you.